Look, I'll give it to Young and Restless that the Nate slash Devon slash Lily stuff has a family element to it. But on the whole, it's really just more of this musical executive position BS. Not only is it unbelievable that they'd ever welcome Nate back at Chancellor Winters, but I don't care where anyone works at this point. It's gotten beyond ridiculous. Changing jobs is not a storyline, and to have people swapping out positions and careers on a constant basis nullifies any potential impact for viewers. It's become a joke. Case in point, the preview showing Jill telling Chance to come work at Chancellor, and she'll show him the ropes of the corporate world. Make it stop. Young and Restless is slowly moving into two different love triangles, one of which may become a quadrangle. First, we have Lily slash Daniel slash Heather, which is progressing predictably what with Lucy and Heather showing up at Daniel's apartment. You just know that Lily's going to come downstairs and find Heather and Daniel in a deep discussion on the sofa while Lucy is nowhere to be seen. The second is Summer slash Chance slash Sharon, which could become a quadrangle now that Kyle's seemingly starting to see the light. My guess is that Summer's interest in Chance will catch his attention and make him realize what he let go. If that's the case, and the endgame is Kyle slash Summer and Nick slash Sharon, it doesn't bode well for the Chancellor hair. In Related, how funny was it when Nina asked Abby to sit with them at Society? Considering she positively ripped into her son's ex-wife the last time she saw her, and that Chance's current girlfriend was accompanying them, everyone's expressions were very doughty hate. And then, Oak, let's roll with it. Hilarious. I don't know how you make characters like Tucker McCall and Audra Charles Humdrum, but that's exactly what's happening. They're all talk, and over many months haven't pulled off anything intriguing despite a ton of so-called scheming. They plot, but nothing ever comes of it. I no longer react when they threaten or posture because I don't expect a payoff. Likewise, the Abbott's disagreements have become tiresome and repetitive, as have the Newmans. It's somewhat interesting that Diane is urging Kyle to keep a secret from Jack whilst engaging in a risky plot, but she's also playing right into Tucker's hands, and we already know it. Unless her scheme causes Jack to lose Jebba, it's a fizzle for me. It remains to be seen where the Nikki kidnapping is going, and frankly, where it came from. Although we've now met Great Aunt Jordan, we don't know what her issue is with Nikki, how she knows she was an alcoholic, or why she's targeting the entire Newman family. Given how much the writers dialed up the hate from Nick, Victoria, and Nikki toward Adam in the lead-up to the kidnapping, I'm wondering how he'll fit into this puzzle. He would likely not be considered a part of Nikki's family by Claire and Jordan, and therefore would not be targeted, so it's possible the black sheep will become a white sheep by saving the whole damn fam. It certainly would be a game-changing twist that could alter the family dynamics for good in the aftermath. In related commentary, how fun was the surprise reveal that Jordan is being played by as the world turns icon Colleen Zink? Love it. Also, we're gonna need an answer to this. I don't know what Victor was trying to achieve by telling his daughter, she's nothing without him or his company, but in Victoria's shoes, I'd want to prove him wrong rather than fall back into line. I was really looking forward to the Tucker slash Jill confrontation, but it was more aimless talk that didn't change anything or drive the story forward.